Chris Hampton and Fred Lenhart. Great. This is PSTA's Legislative Committee. Hi, Hi guys. Uh, this is Brad. Hey, uh, uh, we are uh, here as the committee, although we don't have a quorum. We're working on that, but um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. And just not take any action at him. So, uh, yeah. Him yeah, we'll call the meeting uh, to order. Um, this is Darden here. We have Brad. We have Alan Zemet, our attorney. We have Commissioner Wayne Bay Newton. Okay, um, the, the uh, first uh, item that we can talk about is an update from you uh, guys. Um, uh, Fred? Or Chris, you want to uh, give us an update on anything that's going on in Tallahassee? Well, well good afternoon. This is Fred, and I'll, I'll start. You, I'm sure, are aware that we have our first committee week coming up later this month, and we will, of course, be there uh, and thus start the process of preparing for the 2014 session. Um, We've got one legislative race underway where Representative Pisano has been appointed to a local constitutional office and there's now an election underway for his successor in that particular district. Uh, bills are getting filed and we track those on a daily basis and uh, see if there are things relevant to the transportation cause. Uh, Chris Hansen, go ahead. You got any, anything you want to... Uh, Talk about a point out. Yeah, on a, on a bigger picture and, and to kind of play off some of the issues that we had last year, I I think our budget's going to be even stronger than last year. I think your you know your your line item funding should be just fine, and and maybe it's the year we really zero in on a couple projects and make a hard push for some of those projects that you're trying to build within the service area. And Brad, I know we ran into the issue of, you know, I guess there's a, a pecking order within the department on getting things on the on the work order list, um, which I'm not a real expert in the DOT process there, but maybe that's something we could either, you know, talk about today or, you know, in the next few weeks. But Nothing like having a little extra money around there, and if you don't ask, you won't receive. And I know certainly on your top five issues from last session, a couple were some, some big projects that require infrastructure dollars, and I would certainly would love to try and help you all, and, and our team would love to help you start putting those dollars together and get, get PSPA some, some new things in your area. Outstanding. Outstanding. Um, well, uh, okay, uh, in regards to that, and I'm not necessarily certain that this is uh, exactly uh, legislative um, discretionary. It's more the Florida DOT. But uh, we have been, uh, just today, been um, going into much more greater detail into our uh, future operating capital plans with the a, uh, financial consultant that we've just hired, Ernst and & Young. And um, of course, in the event that we um, have a successful referendum in 2014 uh, and uh, are ramping up and uh, adding a number of different services, including some bus rapid transit services on our major corridors in Pinellas County. Um, we, we've been talking about seeking um, what are known as service development grants that the Florida DOT allocates to new services that have been, that uh, with, for their first three years of operations. That uh, any uh, transit system in the state of Florida that is implementing a new service can get kind of startup seed money from the Florida DOT usually matched at 50% of the total cost for the first three years of operations. And so um, 
what we would be aiming to do is put in probably uh, a number of those type of uh, applications. The kicker is, or what we're learning, is that it, it, it takes two years. Um, you have to put in the application two years prior to the start of any service. So as we sit here today in the uh, fall of 2013, we would be about two years from the start of a new service. And uh, so something that um, I think we should put on our priority list, even for the legislature, is to you know, keep them apprised of our schedule and that we, you know, we have put in uh, these requests to the uh, DOT and that they could lend um, their support to those. Um, to those initiatives, uh, the other the other is, uh, thing I think uh, that I remember we heard about last year, but I don't think anything was specifically done. But Senator Brandis spoke to me and to you, Chris, I believe, and to uh, Darden when we were in Tallahassee that he had an in, an uh, idea or an, an initiative to try to prioritize. Um, bus rapid transit um, uh, services. I yep. think, quite frankly, it was in the um, his mindset was to prioritize bus rapid transit in lieu of rail. Uh, but since uh, our plan does call for both in in our long range future and bus rapid transit uh, services uh, in phase number one that we would go ahead and um, maybe put on our list a, uh, a bus rapid transit, uh, some of our early bus rapid transit projects, especially the one in St. Petersburg uh, along Central Avenue, which we've done a full study for and it's been on our priority list for a long time. So, um, okay. so those are sort of the uh, things on the our radar screen as far as um, ask. Go as far as uh, the the concern that we heard from Representative Hooper last year that uh, our our uh, projects were not in the uh, work program, the DOT work program. We have uh, attempted, or we are, we believe we are remedying that by including all of these uh, uh, bus rapid transit routes and whatnot in our. In our own uh, transit development plan, which feeds into the MPO's TIP, which then leads into the DOT work program. So, if he says that to it again to us again, we can uh, say no. We we don't think that's that's factual. <laughs> um, yeah. um, and Brad, maybe a follow up to that. I, I know at the I guess your last meeting there was a discussion about the tax swap and possibility of reintroducing that and the timing of reintroducing that was something that um, I guess was up for discussion. Is there something we need to do to follow up on that, that thought process? Well, that's actually our second item on our agenda. And so I'll go ahead and introduce that to uh, Darden and Wenge. Um, yeah, as uh, I think both of you uh, were there at our last PSA meeting. The idea that we would some perhaps revisit the earlier attempt to eliminate the pro uh, property tax powers of PSTA legislatively, which was yay. yay we, we have a quorum. <laughs> our, our quorum just survived. Patty Johnson. Um, one of those high speed rails. That you can get here. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm just talking about internet sales tax. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Patty, Patty, we are um, on the uh, conference call with the folks from Gray Robinson, our lobbyists uh, in Tallahassee. Yeah, we're actually on item three B on the agenda. Okay. And. Uh, I was just mentioning that at a PSTA uh, meeting recently, uh, I think it was Ken Welch or some, I think it was Ken Welch asked if we would uh, consider revisiting the governor's veto of the um, elimination of the PSTA property tax by the state if a sales tax is approved. Um, and 
so I said we would talk about that at, at this legislative committee. Right. Um, after the governor uh, vetoed that two years ago, uh, we set about seeing if we could still uh, do the same thing but do it locally without uh, state legislation. And at your places is a draft um, interlocal agreement right. be, uh, that is between PSTA and Pinellas County. And this is the uh, agreement that the county will uh, vote to approve probably at the same time they approve of the referendum language this coming December. Uh, but this contract includes language that essentially does the same thing that we are asking the state to do, that it, it limits PSTA's ability to levy the property tax in the future. The, the, uh, the way that it does that is different than the uh, state. It does it by um, saying that should a future PSTA board ever levy a um, property tax, one year from now, a hundred years from now, uh, for every dollar of property tax that PSTA levies, the county will withhold no. or will remit. Will re PSTA will have to pay the county an equal amount of money. So if um, we levy a property tax that generates a hundred dollars, we have to pay the county a hundred dollars. And uh, there, uh, Alan can explain sort of the details of, of, of that, but essentially that makes it so there's no advantage to PSBA or a future PSBA board to levy a property tax, so we wouldn't make any money off of it. Uh, and therefore, we would not, uh, that, that would essentially eliminate the property tax. To be a net sum game. Right. Now, uh, and we can go into more details about it. The, the, uh, the, sum, the summary is that, that that language is in there in section uh, five. Um, but it is not as clean, as you can see by the long paragraph, or as easy to understand, or as straightforward as having the state totally eliminate the power of PSDA. Um, to, uh, ability to live your property tax. So there, there would, and, and uh, additionally, there would be advantages to PSDA to have the um, state uh, eliminate the, the uh, power rather than the Section 5 maintained forever. Um, there's a potential that our bonding capacity could be uh, reduced because there would be this theoretical ability uh, for the county to limit our sales tax. Um, <coughs> again, what we would be likely in the future issuing uh, bonds and uh, pledging the sales tax revenue. And if the county has um, dibs on that money in some way, that will reduce our uh, ability or our bonding capacity. Now the Allen, and others in his firm have written language here to try to limit that problem as much as possible. Uh, but obviously, if we didn't have the power to levy the tax, uh, the property tax, and if the county couldn't take the money or ask us to pay them money, that would make that uh, cleaner. To limit what problem? The issue of bonding? Yeah. Or the issue of uh, the county taking part of the sales tax? The bonding issue. Okay. <clears throat> the, the, the issue with the issuing bonds is you cannot pledge as loan taxes unless you have a separate referendum that approves a local government to pledge with that loan taxing power. So <clears throat> if we go to issue bonds and, and the PSA pledges the surtax, mm -hmm. the concern is, is that those markets that determine how much bonding capacity they're going to allow you to have and how much bonds are going to be willing to sell. Mm -hmm. or buy, um, might be limited by their recognition that, well, while you think you're going to get $120 million a year, you might actually get $120 million, $120 million minus some amount of money that you can't 
pledged to pay us back with. So um, we've actually asked Ernst and Young to kind of take a look at that from a financial perspective and from the credit markets to see what if they think the way it's drafted now mm -hmm. might minimize that risk. Um, but obviously it would be a lot cleaner if our if PSA Special Act was amended that just said, okay, as long as there's a surtax, we're going to go authority to issue that long tax. We did also add to this Section 5 recently in the last draft that if the Special Act is changed, then that this Section 5 basically gets eliminated. Um, so no, we haven't also, the other thing that we should tell them is we have not yet shown this to the county. So, okay. So I, um, I have spoken to um, Gray Robinson earlier about this. So, in summary, we think, or we would recommend, that PSDA at some point try to go back to the legislature and try again to see if the legislature would be willing to um, amend this PSDA special act to eliminate the property tax from the state level. Uh, however. I don't think that uh, things have changed sufficient, uh, significantly in Tallahassee compared to two years ago when uh, the governor vetoed this. To put this in our legislative agenda for this coming session, the 2014 session, uh, it may likely uh, have the same fate as it did before. However, uh, the uh, referendum is scheduled for November of 2014, next November, a year from now. Uh, the sales tax, if approved, if the voters approve it in November of 2014, the sales tax won't kick in for a year until January 1st of 2016. There will be a legislative session in the spring of 2015 that where the sales tax would have already passed, but not have kicked in yet. It seems to us, and I think Ray Robinson concurs with this, that maybe perhaps the reasons for uh, the governor vetoing the PSDA property tax elimination will, would have gone away under that scenario. Property tax is in place. All this does is eliminate the ability of PSDA to levy, or no, the sales tax is in place, this would just eliminate the property tax, so there wouldn't be uh, two taxes or the potential for two taxes out there, um, and the legislature might go for it. Yeah, I, I certainly concur with that, Brad. I, you know, I, I think it's, it's a wise decision to make at this point in time, and um, as soon as the voters decide one way or the other. It, It'll, in my opinion, steal our faith one way or the other, and, and you know, hopefully it'll be a positive vote with your, your voters in your county, and, and then we'll be able to take it to the 2015 legislature. And, and I, I really think it, it will be pretty easy to pass. Yeah, if, if the referendum is approved, it should be really easy to pass the following session. The concern would be. Uh, the legislature reaction in 2014 is the extent that would be used as part of the campaign debate. Uh, All right. And, and for next year, if we were talking about that, the first stop would be Senator Brandes and the second stop would be the governor's office to vet the idea, which uh, may lead to the similar conclusion that better waiting for 2015 might be the better way to go. No. The only problem I see is um, you currently have the, the proponents or the people that's against the uh, or the argument that they have against the um, being able to have a one cent sales tax replace the the, the apple on the tax for the PSTA is that it's um, not a true swap because you still have the ability to uh, levy a, a property tax and I think that um, having that issue settled prior to the referendum will be have more credence because the people will know that um, if it's successful, it will be only one tax. And it won't be the ability of another, say, rogue administration to come in and do what they want to do. I mean, because the only problem um, um, you have is the ability still there. Even in the wording, I mean, it's almost a half page, and it's very confusing. Just to try to stay clear for funding, 
but going to the, to the referendum, if, if, the, if the chance is going to be it's not a true tax swap, they're gonna still going to be able to uh, charge you Avalon if they choose to do so in the future. It's going to be a true statement. Well, you're right. I mean, but that's why this, this I mean, I agree. I understand. It's confusing, but that's why this is in right. place, is that we can say, I mean, and it is true that it, it really will not be a viable option for PS for a future PSA board to levy the property tax. Uh, there would there be, from a practical standpoint, there would be no reason to I understand, but I think that's the rationale behind uh, Chairman Welch's suggestion to try it again. If oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, the elected official didn't have to the governor did, but if um, knowing what we've accomplished so far and all the stuff that we've done, and also um, having a meeting in place that would um, that would um, precede a successful referendum, then it would be an automatic. He wouldn't have to worry about uh, this in the other two tax. Because there may have been an issue. Did anyone, did he ever talk about why he did it? Or he just vetoed it? He wrote us a letter, uh, and uh, he, he noted what he wrote in the letter was that he thought this could be done locally. Uh, what uh, Senator Brandis uh, said to us was that he worked, uh, he talked to the governor and, and um, believed that this would make it more likely that a sales tax would pass for this initiative and so incur and ask the governor to veto it. Um, is what we, what Senator Brandis has publicly said. Um, so those, that's the, the info I think we've gotten. Um, and I think that would be the same result if we did it again, because there would be those, uh, those legislators up at, uh, in Tallahassee that would believe that this is something that might get in, uh, be full, a positive or a negative in the vote in 2014 ahead of the vote and would be influenced by that. It certainly hey, Brad, seems... Brad, a follow-up on Senator Brandis. Was there any, um, seems like right after session, Senator Brandis went to Denver, Colorado, and, and did an extensive tour of their transit system, and supposedly, at least according to something I read somewhere, came back with a little different perspective on light rail. Does, does that ring a bell with anybody up in the call today that he made some comments about the way they're doing things in Denver. He translated the Florida and light rail as part of that equation. Yes, uh, he went to some kind of conference, a legislative conference in uh, Portland, Oregon. And uh, I know he rode the uh, transit and the rail uh, while he was out there. And the article that I saw was well, I wouldn't say he, you know, did a 180 or anything like that, but he talked about how transit was, uh, he could see how it was beneficial to Portland, uh, and his quote had something to do with the problem is we just don't have any money. Uh, we don't have sufficient funds. And he talked about how the gas tax uh, is declining, and he sort of talked to us about the revenue, not about the sort of fundamental mode of choice or anything like that. So I think it was more positive uh, from that perspective. Well, we can try to pop up with him next uh, next week when he or two weeks when he's back up here. If we get a chance to talk to him, I'd, I'd love to kind of follow up and maybe hear it out of his own mouth into my ears and try and report that back to you all. Okay. Uh, I, my question is what of all of this is the downside for the county. What would the county, what would make the county say, no, I don't want this? We mean the local this business? is an upside for us. So right. why would the county say, I don't want it? Well, uh, there, there are three key components to that agreement. Number one is that uh, uh, property tax elimination, section five. Number two And is, do they get part of that? Uh, no. No. Well, if, if, well, only if PSA were to impose yeah. an ad valorem tax, they would get both. part of the sales surplus. I don't believe that the county will be 
negative toward that. I think they'll be neutral. It doesn't affect the general revenue. Right. Number, issue number two is that there, this agreement does not call for any kind of sunset provision where the tax would be sunsetted. The reason being is that it would pay for the operation of the transit, so it can't, if it's sunset, then we would okay. risk eliminating some transit. At least from talking to the county, they, they understand that. Okay. And then number three, and this is the issue that perhaps there might be some debate or discussion at the county commission, uh, because there was some uh, just yesterday at the ACPP, that 100% of the sales tax receipts under this 1% uh, would flow to PSTA to be used for transit. Mm -hmm. The state legislation allows for up to 25% of this penny to be used for other other projects, right. road projects, other transportation projects. And um, at least at the ACPT meeting yesterday, uh, Commissioner Seal talked about maybe wanting to do other projects. Bike trails uh, or you know, roadways, and um, so I think they'll have some debate on that. Uh, yet yesterday there was a meeting of the ACPT and Commissioner Latvala and Commissioner Welch were there, and uh, uh, Julie Wojcicki from BSBA, and um, they did not agree to that. They, they didn't agree to Commissioner Seals proposal, and I don't know if there's other. I don't think there's multiple votes on the county commission to, to do that, but I think they're going to have that discussion. The county commission currently doesn't uh, split any of the uh, PSCA revenue for other transportation projects like bike trails or stuff like that. They use the penny fund for that, right? Right. We that was the uh, the whole advent of the penny for Pinellas. Uh, we sold the people on all these good trails and parks and bridges and things that we could do with the penny. So they already have that. So I don't understand the rationale behind uh, wanting uh, another percentage of the of, of the transit or or uh, PSEA's uh, uh, revenue stream to do projects for which they already got another ten years of dedicated uh, penny right. tax. Uh, another thing also, I'm reminded of, uh, and it's back to the tax swap. I think it was the school board down in Miami that I read that was able to do that, trade out their tax authority, the Avalon, for uh, a one cent sales tax. Are you guys uh, at Great Rocks, are you familiar with that? And what was around that? Was that something local or were they able to take out the authority of Tallahassee? How'd that work? curious because at the same time I think we were chopping at the bit they were trying to propose in that also and the one down Miami way past but I, I know that it was it was similar to the, them giving up their tax authority in, in exchange for uh, a penny of uh, sales tax. I know in Polk County uh, Lakeland area in Polk County the County Commission has voted to place a uh, this one percent on the ballot in November of 2014 and eliminate the property tax that they currently provide for transit just kind of like in their front of copy yes basically um, and they're doing the same thing with an interlocal agreement right now they're a county department so it uh, already flows to the county but they're becoming an independent authority um, like more like PSTA and they're going to do it what they told me was they they got an interlocal agreement just like this that 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 eliminates the uh, property tax. The only like I said, the only uh, the ink that I see uh, probably going forward to the referendum is that the, the rate payers, ones that have to, have to pay this, are going to fear of having a, an 
an agency have the ability to tax them twice, and that's still going to be a viable option. If we're not here in five or ten years, you know, the next regime might say, you know, well, we already have authority, let's go back and use it. And I think just only have, because right now we only got one. We can't. We can't get any more than the military has been allowed, correct, for funding of the PSA. I think there's a little That's, smidge we can go up. Just well, a smidge. You, well, you can't go any further than the smidge mm -hmm. that's been allowed right. for what they gave us. So the, 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 the rate payers know, or, or the taxpayers know, that they can only worry up to that point for its transportation. Um, but having the ability to do and that's what they did on the city. We have 10 mills. Can't go any higher than that without going back in legislative approvals. So that's, that's oversight. But to have the ability to do that and the uh, the, the Avalon is a little um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a hard. Act. That was a big thing with uh, us at the city of St. Pete when Marion was imposing fire tax. They wanted the fire tax. <laughs> they wanted the Avalon tax. They wanted tax on the tax, and you know, just and the people were just against having aggressive taxes and be able to go in and have other things that they wanted to tax. Right. They allowed them 10 mil points to provide for the necessary services of the, of the whole population in the city of St. Pete. Now they want to come back and get the 10 mil and the opportunity to do a, a fire fee or tax or whatever they want to call it. That was a big, a big, um, a big problem. That's what I'm saying. Having the, the ability, I'm not saying that you won't do it, but having the ability to do that is going to raise quite a, quite a bit of concern. And that's what their people are saying now. It's not a true tax law. Not a true tax law. Yeah, and that's what we're totally addressing by proposing to go to the legislature for a second bite of the apple Correct. to eliminate it. And I fully support um, doing that. I think it shows our due diligence, and I think it helps us in our reporting to the Board of County Commissioners that we're pursuing this in a, in a, in a very uh, steadfast way to eliminate the issue that uh, Commissioner Newton is uh, emphasizing. And, um, and I do think that um, it seems like now is a great time, um, an optimum time, to get Board of County Commissioners support as we kind of pursue this plan B, an alternate backup plan, if for whatever reason, if the legislature would not to come through again. If, if I may, Gray Robinson, you, you uh, obviously were in support of doing, the, doing it in 2015 after it has passed, if it passes, um, what are the pros and cons of doing it now versus 2015? Other than the obvious, we'll know the vote, what happened to the vote by the end, but it may be point mute. If, if it doesn't pass, we won't have to worry about 2015. So one takes care of the other, but what are the pros and cons of, of not doing it now with the information that you just learned? I didn't know Plant City or Polk County was proposing something similar to what we were doing to, to take care of the transit. So I guess that has happened since the governor vetoed the uh, the tax swap. So it's the, 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 like the, uh, the the whole the whole environment is changing. So I'm just wondering, what is your take on the pros and cons of doing it now versus waiting until after the vote is in? Well, and I'll tell you what I'm saying. The I guess the the first uh, the first thing is that the individual, the elected official, the governor is not to veto the legislation to pass. Uh, will still be governor, and I assume our bill will be identical. There won't be any changes. And at least from from a lobbying perspective, you you just passed the bill a few years ago that was identical, and the governor vetoed it. And unless you know we can prove a case uh, to the governor's office on you know why it needs to you know, be brought up and, and discussed and passed by the legislature and not vetoed by the governor. I mean, that's just got to be the first check we would have to run up here, or, you know, we would spend 60% of our time passing that local bill and fight the Tea Party uh, just to have it vetoed again. But, you know, sometimes when the governor signals that he has a change of position, uh, that could really help us. So, but I, I think that's the first big hurdle we would have to check on and and right now I, my, my gut tells me I don't see anything that's any different uh, the governor uh, you know if we want to talk politics is, is going to rely on the Tea Party to provide him uh, enough votes to be reelected, and, and that's a, a base he'll have to reach out and, and uh, you know, do things together their support but for 
Fred, any any comments on your side? No, I think you have the nail on the head. You have the same governor sitting there. We had support from most of the delegation, but I think Dr. Brandon is a key player in the transportation mix right now, and betting this with him uh, would be an important strategic move if there was a desire to go now as opposed to waiting a year um, and then see where that went, as, as well as the entire delegation. But this would obviously have to be supported by the delegation again. And given the previous governor's veto, I would think they would want a thorough understanding as to what the governor would intend to do if they passed at this time. Um, my only comment to that is the, 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 the environment, like you guys just stated. Since then, the governor's come out in full support for Sunrail. And the rail from Miami to Orlando um, and, and, and supporting that. He's also kicking himself for all the jobs he lost when he sent back $2.3 billion to other areas to, to use for their transportation plan. And just late as uh, on Monday at our regional planning meeting, we found out that it's going to take at least, at least the creation of 900,000 jobs just to get to the 6% unemployment rate. Not the 700,000 he's chop, chopping at the bid for. But 900,000. And in the local region, we have to create another new 195,000 jobs just to be able to get to the 6% unemployment rate, which is currently at 7.1 and probably going back up. So, yes, he has some people that he has to be, uh, uh, I guess, beholden to. But he's also uh, mindful of what happened uh, about all the jobs that he sent away with, you know, sending that money away to, a, a, uh, to appease uh, a certain entity. So, I'm just saying it's a lot has changed, but you guys are up there. You guys are doing that. I'm, I can tell you unequivocally on the Tampa Regional Planning, he's vetoed our funding every year. So what we're doing now, we're just getting involved more proactive than reactive. Instead of sending letters from all elected officials to support, you know, keeping the funding in the budget, on not, not, we're getting uh, uh, involved ahead of time to see um, what things could we do uh, to uh, uh, appease them enough to keep our funding in there for regional planning. And, and the Florida Chambers just presented us with an award and uh, on the things that we're doing as it pertains to regional planning and now uh, offering uh, assistance to uh, regional transportation. So I, I don't know. I mean, you're right. It's going to be an election year or silly season, as you call it. But uh, there's a lot at stake here now because the, the jobs thing is it's a key driving factor. So That's good. Good point. Good. Um, maybe just to, uh, while we still have Gray Robinson on the phone, um, the next item on our informational items is uh, Pinellas Legislative Delegation, which we've been talking about, Senator Brandis. Um, wanted to make the committee aware, and uh, Gray Robinson, if you have any comments, but uh, the Tampa Bay Partnership um, is hosting a the Bay Area Legislative Delegation this Thursday uh, at 10 o'clock at the airport, at the TIA airport. Um, and uh, so I, I think there'll be a number of sessions. There's a Pinellas Legislative Delegation that has, I think, two hearings for uh, local bills and then other topics. Um, there's at least this one, I think there's two Bay Area Legislative Delegation meetings. This one, I understand, that is on uh, Thursday, I think, is um, being limited, or comments are being limited to the airport, the uh, airport's master plan. Right. I think I'm planning on attending anyway. Um, so we'll get in, get in touch with the um, legislators this fall is probably a very important thing to do. Um, I also put on here that we are hosting the Florida Public Transit Association's conference on October 28th and 29th, and I have uh, sent out an invitation to both Senator Brandis and Senator Latnala to welcome the uh, approximately 300 uh, transit professionals, uh, public and private sector, when it's in Clearwater Beach. So. Um, before, we get away from that, before we get away from that, Madam Chair, yes. if I may, um, on, on the, um, I guess, second bite the apple for the, the, um, having the, the governor um, uh, to eliminate the, uh, the tax authority, 
I, I would, I would, I, I would make a motion that we, we wait and let Gray Robinson speak with uh, Senator Brandis and and then get some some feel then because, like I say, a lot has happened and what you're saying does make sense. Um, but I would um, uh, make a motion that we wait for that and then see how it would proceed because, um, like I said, the chair or the incoming chair did. Or the, I'm sorry, the chair of the county commission did request that we do that. I don't want to just talk about it. I'd rather have an action on it. And I make a motion that we'll, we'll wait till Gray Robinson, I guess, poll Senator Brandis to see what, what's, what, what's the viability of trying again. That makes sense to me. Do I hear a second? Um, I second that. Oh, gosh. I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we need to talk about this a little bit more. I mean, I think it's good to get more information from Gray Robinson um, to gauge what exactly may have shifted to see how we go forward. And it would be good to have that information first. Just so the committee is aware, we'll probably go ahead and share this with the county while that's happening because they've asked for us to get a copy of the interlocal agreement. So okay. it'll probably go as drafted. That's fine, I think but, that's but as I understand well. what you're going to do. But, but, but also, if they ask you guys what about this, you can say, well, we're in the process of having okay. our, our, our lobbyists uh, speak with uh, one of the uh, legislators and, and get more information how to proceed. Okay. Well, I think we're all in agreement with your motion. So, so okay. take a vote. Yeah, okay. take a vote. <laughs> <laughs> So um, let's get a vote um, to support uh, Commissioner Newton's motion to have um, Gray Robinson speak to uh, Senator Brandis and uh, get, use that information to help determine our next steps with the, asking the legislature to support as well. Second. All in favor? <laughs> okay. All in favor? Uh, okay. Any, okay. Anyone against? Yes. Okay. Motion passes 3 0. Motion passes three to zero. Also, that will show uh, Commissioner Welch that uh, mm -hmm. the chairman was that we did address it and we did take action. Well. Yeah. I didn't want to talk, but I know we got down to the the agenda. But do you want to go back and uh, do the, the action and approval of the, the minutes? Yeah, okay. I do. Move, move approval of the minutes, uh, July 9th. Uh, Second. Mm -hmm. um, do I hear a vote? Or I'm sorry, discussion on the minutes. Any changes? I'm good with it. Are you? It was one thing here I asked about. Oh, we're not going to get with right offline. Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So, um, do I hear a support for the motion to accept the minutes as is? All in favor? Aye. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Any opposed? All right. So moved. Passes three to zero. Accept the minutes. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, any other? Um, comments that the uh, committee would like to make about reaching out in the, this fall to our legislative delegation or uh, you guys from Gray Robinson do you want to um, highlight anything any uh, any any connections we should try to make or any other legislators we should try to get get with well you know I, I think you you've got a couple of uh, you know powerful members uh, in your general area there. You've got a future speaker and, and Representative Corcoran uh, coming through the, the lineup. You've got Senator Lafayette already there and, and Jeff Brandis chairing the Senate Transportation Committee. So, uh, you know, I think, and, and I think Brad hit on these things, you guys are doing the right things there locally. Anytime you can uh, you know, invite them to something or if there's a ribbon cutting ceremony or you know your meeting you're going to have in october those are all the right things to do and and trust me they'll they'll come um they're going to want their picture in the paper or just to hear what's on the community's mind so that certainly helps us be a better advocate for you up here um and you know, just keep doing what you're doing and, and, and Brad, I would say, I, I, I know it's, it's not always the easiest thing, but having your delegation travel to Tallahassee, I think it, it pays dividends. Um, you've got to be walking the hall, you have to be seen, so please consider you know, looking at some dates and budget some money for travel up here and um, 
doing that during a committee week is, is usually easier than the start of session. And as Fred mentioned, committee week, uh, the first one is the week of September the 23rd, and then roughly we'll have a committee week each uh, for one week in each of the next three months. So, you know, um, if you can put that group together, I, I just think it's, it's time well spent. That's a good point. I, I think um, last session we did not make a, I can't remember when we went. I, May not have been during a committee week. It might have been during the session. It was during the session. Like last minute. But but uh, but it but uh, uh, in times in the previous times we did go during committee week. Maybe we should try to um, look at our calendars and invite as many people from the legislative committee that want to go to go, and we'll go up there. We'll try. We'll, we'll pick yeah, one of these. This, this of course, is not an election year. Because last year they didn't get start the committee process until after the general election. Okay. So, uh, so you said um, committee weeks are one week per month in uh, September, October, November, December. Yeah, and the committee week in October is the week of October seventh. Committee week in November is the week of November the fourth, and in December is the week of December ninth. So uh, we, we can come up with uh, yeah. some possible travel days. It's basically a two-day, well, uh, uh, pretty much two full days. Mm -hmm. Drive up there uh, and then um, meet with all the let's meet with as many as we can um, the next day, and then drive back, get back late at night. Can we bring a hybrid uh, PSTA bus? It'll be somewhere to park it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see everything in the Capitol, on the Capitol uh, patio here. Pull all kind of stuff in there. So. Okay. Well, thank you guys. Um, thank you very much. We'll keep you posted, and um, uh, we'll stay in touch about if any there's any communication with uh, Senator Brandis or other fine legislators. Yeah, We'll do our best to meet with them uh, the week of the 23rd and report back. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Chris. Thanks, Fred. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, the last item that I wanted to touch upon was the uh, uh, committee meeting dates. Um, a new member of our committee, um, Commissioner Janet Long, uh, wants to be on the committee, but she is unable to attend any meeting that occurs on Tuesday afternoon. So, uh, a suggestion by our expert Rachel is to maybe move this to a Wednesday morning. The first, the first, the, well, the first Wednesday of every month morning. Mm. Starting, well, Starting in January, or all well, we could work. Well, yeah, Janet's not going to be able to make any of them. Um, and that's not going to be put on the agenda, you know, to all to approve next year's calendar. Yeah. Um, so. Well, January would be fine because the council calendar is usually set in December for the year. So we will know it uh, 12 months left before we can put stuff in. Because we all serve on different committees. I'm on PSTA, I'm on regional plan. PSTA is Monday. Um, work that is some, well, work that usually is on Friday, so that's not a real stickler. But they'll start bumping to each other. You'll, give, you'll, you'll, you'll help one, but you'll probably throw two more off. So we got to coordinate that. Can we, can we set Wednesday mornings as a placeholder date until we get more resolution about other conflicts, schedules? Yeah. Wednesday morning's good for me. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it dovetails with the PSA board meeting time yeah. and the, uh, on the fourth Wednesday of the month, and then the legislative, I mean, the finance and planning committees on the third, third Wednesday of every month, so. So you want to do it before the, before the um, board meeting? Is that what, you, what you're saying? No, no, no. First Wednesday. First of the month. Uh, 
Well, the yeah, I mean we can starting in January. Starting in January, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we might maybe look at the last three meetings of the year with your with your schedule. See, Mm -hmm. you can attend the one day you're out in the second. Maybe I'll just highlight that um, uh, T. Barda has hired um, KPMG, a consulting firm out of in their out of their Orlando office, to complete the state legislatively mandated um, um, study of the cost savings by coordinating or consolidating activities with art. And PSGA at your last meeting, is this right, Rachel, that they approved of a special uh, working committee that I believe uh, the two of you might be on to uh, to, to uh, oversee or have discussions with HART as that study progresses. I think they've had just a kickoff meeting so far with KPMG. Senator Latvala told uh, T. Barda that what he's looking at of that study is for a uh, number, a dollar number that um, KPMG can validate to prove, so that he can prove to everyone else that indeed uh, consolidating the two organizations would save some money. Um, And um, that's his goal. But not necessarily to pursue it further than that. So that's the latest. Okay. Was there anything about the Greenlight Citizens Committees? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, this on um, September twenty fifth. Um, that's a week. Uh, let's see. Two weeks from Thursday is our Greenlight Pinellas Council Thursday the, or no, I'm sorry, Wednesday, Wednesday the 25th, Mm -hmm. um, Greenlight Pinellas Council meeting, 10 a.m. at TBRPC, the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council's offices on US-19 there in lovely Pinellas Park. Uh, I think it's Pinellas Park over there. Oh, it absolutely Yeah, right, okay. It okay. Is. okay. It is. The way they've been jury mandarin is probably, probably South Largo or something like that. Or North Lone. So that is the council meeting, which uh, includes um, Chairman Rice, uh, as well as eight other uh, representatives of the Civic Committee. Business Committee and Government Committee, which is the September um, ACPT. September 25th, right? September 25th. Same day as the board meeting. Right, the 6th. The board meeting, per our uh, per our bylaws, uh, meets in the evening two times a year, September and April. And so we're, that meeting is at night that. Thursday stuff, not Thursday, but it is Thursday. Wednesday, I mean, not Thursday. Six o'clock. It's tomorrow at 6 p.m. 14. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the green light schedule is uh, moving right along. The council is sort of representing the public input. And the, the, the game plan is that the council will meet twice. Um, in September, uh, this meeting will mostly be a um, reporting out of what happened at the Greenlight Business Committee and the Civic and the Government Committee, and then the uh, then there'll be a final meeting. I think we're going to be targeting early November for um, for the council to take final action to um, take a position on the Greenlight Panels plan. After they have reviewed the financial work that will be done by then, 
the uh, PSPA and now ACPT uh, have both approved the Greenlight Panels Plan vision. Uh, and the MPO is going uh, to be, pre I'm going to present that to them tomorrow at their MPO meeting, but um, I'm not asking them to take a position this time. In October, October 14th, the ACPT will, be the, will, will see the financial plan and the PSPA board will see the financial plan in October. And then uh, it'll all set up for no November. November, the Greenlight Council will weigh in. PSPA board will be asked to approve the Greenlight Panels plan November 20th at the meeting there. Can't remember the MPO, PPC, all uh, will be able to approve the Greenlight Panels plan in November, setting the stage for December 3rd and 10th, the county to um, approve of it and to uh, approve of the ballot language, this interlocal agreement. We'll all have a lovely uh, Christmas after that. <laughs> <laughs> A green Christmas. A green Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> With green lights. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Brad. Um, any other business? The, um, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, it's just, I just want to remind you, you do have a public comment section over there. I, I was going to go to that next. Because next the, the, ad, the address of Tampa Regional Planning Council is 4000 Gateway Center Boulevard, Suite 100. Don't sit in Horace Park. Says uh, allow me not to <laughs> yeah. uh, the again? address for Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council. The location is 4000 Gateway Center Boulevard, and that's Suite 100. It's Tampa Regional Planning. When you're headed north on US 19, mm -hmm. you go by the Toyota dealership, and mm -hmm. there's this big, nice looking gateway entrance. Yeah. Turn right there, and you'll see it. You're coming up from okay. uh, St. Pete, though, mm -hmm. on the interstate. Okay. I can put no, up. She's coming up on the address. There were Wawa's at, the new Wawa's in Pinellas Park. Uh, I'm yeah, I'll I'll there. next to yes. the family. So, um, <laughs> is the there public comment? Public comment, sir? Okay. I was going to ask. Well, oh, go ahead, uh, no, go ahead. I was going to ask Brad, um, is he where you, you want the, the presentations? I think you have a list of the ones we were going to do. Or, or go around and do like regional planning yeah. council. Yeah, yeah, I was just looking at that. Oh, okay. uh, do we do we do regional planning council yet? Yeah. Uh, Bob, have we, yes. we have, have you presented to the Tampa Bay Regional Planning Council? Not yet. No. Okay. Yeah, you have a list. You have a list of where you were going. It was big organization, and then um, whatever the other ones we put in. I, I know that um, I yeah. saw an advisory board for ITT, uh, and they want to have a presentation also. I think I mentioned job core. Um, I was going to say regional planning council, but I thought I saw that one on there. So uh, ne ne next outside. Tuesday night, yeah. either myself or somebody else might be presenting to the Leadership St. Pete 2014 Leadership St. Pete class. Got the Pinellas Tourist Development Council. That's coming up next week. Uh, I thought we had the... Um, Lakeview Community Association, but I don't see that. Uh, yeah, okay. I thought that was coming up, but I don't see it. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, yeah, right, 18. Um, Lakewood Estates. Lakewood Estates Civic yeah. Association. You also have the. Um, our regional plan you just got 13 different like the uh, municipalities there plus uh, <laughs> several government appointed uh, members so I mean, you know, if, if, if it's a um, uh, Fort County thing I think it's at least I want to say about five or six different counties represented right there and we're going to the county yeah uh, I can't remember the city. gentleman's name uh, the chair of it but is it yeah, East Treasure he, Island? Mm -hmm. Mayor Treasure Island. Treasure Island, yeah. And then yeah. Jen Long is on the council now with me. Uh, and um, oh man, we have uh, Osmar there. I mean, they're, they're all one room. These are elected officials. So it's pretty good. I mean, and right. also, if, it, if there's an ass, I don't know if you need it now, but it's a four letter to the council. 
a perfect spot. There's a lot of people coming in for that. <laughs> I, presented, I presented for my third time in my life to the mayor's um, council <laughs> at Antonio's, maybe once a month. Yeah. Well, we got a good presentation from the Board of Chamber yesterday, and they were, it was it was very enlightening. There's a lot of um, things that the employees are looking at that would be to be coming to this area because of transportation and also talent. It was, it was very high on the list. And the governor, he's, that's why I was talking about the climate. The governor's looking at ways to try to, to, try to ease that. Before we go on, should, should, can we go ahead and adjourn the meeting? Yeah, we just okay. yeah, That was comments. Oh, those were comments? Okay. Well, while I was here, I just yeah. got to point out that the effect of October 1st, uh, the, the change to the Sunshine Law, just so you're aware, since I won't be at all of your meetings, you will have to take public comment on any action item. You don't, that doesn't include oh, okay. your minutes. But if you okay. take another vote on anything and take public comment before you vote, right? The minutes are excluded. Uh, ministerial things are okay. ceremonial are excluded, so you don't have to worry about the minutes. But if you do take, if there are action items in the future agendas, mm -hmm. just you no know, public comments at the end. Mm -hmm. Please make sure to ask for public comment before you vote. Okay, so the, the order of operation would be: you get the motion, the second discussion, and then public comment, and then a vote, or, or you maybe take, discussion after public comment. You could take public comment and discussion. Usually, would be the order. You would okay. Vote. So motion, vote, the motion, second, ask for public comment. Okay. Right, because if, if, if you didn't if you didn't get a second, you didn't worry about comment because it's not going to be a vote on. You still um, need to ask yeah. for a comment. The the um. The regional planning just said they implement that too, but that's the state law. Um, but there was, they're making them fill out sheets. They don't have to fill out sheets when they speak. They just speak here and we can catch it on the minutes. Yeah. Well, here's a little she comment card. So she, said she said that. I mean, that way, um, she, she can do it. She can do it at the end. Yeah. But she knows. Okay. Yeah, there's cards over there that they, they fill out. So that way you'll know, but normally they go to the clerk and say, there's, there's any speaker, they have got three cards over there. That way you won't miss anybody, but normally it's, it's at the beginning before we start voting. I mean, that's not anybody speaking. Probably doing now. But we just had that come up in the regional planning that they get to speak in front of the meeting. Um, yeah, um, that might be something. Is any of our we have the option of just having public comment. Because one has the meeting. Okay, do we, because of the new law, is any of the quasi-judicial and do people have to be sworn if they're going to testify? And what I'm talking about is, such as Brad or anyone, under this new law. No. In you, our you, meetings. You, you're, you, you don't, um, none of PSA's board action will be quasi judicial. And, and none of our testimony. No. That's what I said. Quasi judicial, the reason why Church asked that question is quasi judicial is exempt from the statute, so you won't take public comment on quasi judicial matters. Mm -hmm. But quite additional matters more to be like a rezoning, for mm -hmm. example, quite additional. Yes. The other option you have, which is with the, the, what I think Harry Crozier would do ACPP, she's just going to move public comment up underneath the after the minutes That's and mean. allow public comment on any any action item. So you can do it all at once, or you could do it mm -hmm. each one at a time. But what if uh, what if there's something that comes up that's not on the agenda? What if someone makes a motion on something that's not in a... It's public comment. It's not... What if the public can't then anticipate you would have to, what a motion would be? Then you would have to take public comment okay. before you voted on that motion. Okay. If it wasn't on the agenda. Okay. That's common sense. So you could do it either way. Okay. That's effective October 1. Yes. Okay. Almost tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Coming up. Get you ready. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. So we'll see all of you tomorrow night at our budget meeting. <laughs> Six o'clock. Nice. Uh, again, including our missing attendees. <laughs> uh, so let's wait to the beach. And you're welcome to do, um, join me again and hang out here on Friday when our benchmarking people from uh, London are going to be here. Uh, some of the finance committee people are coming back. So we're bringing the double stack bus. Yeah. Uh, no, they're bringing a fancy computer when <laughs> comparing us to Dayton, Ohio, and uh, Orlando, and Austin, Texas. I'm thinking of people in the other room. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
the, these two, the, uh, the Imperial College of London, which is in that Queen's thing, they are they're just the world um, leaders in benchmarking, in um, transportation benchmarking. Well, they, Somebody's gonna do it. Yeah, right. I one, uh, one guy, the one guy is actually from New York. He's an American. He lives over in now in London. All right. I'll see you tomorrow night. I get here early. He keeps me all the time sitting there.